Please welcome Foreign Minister Park with warm rounds of applause. Dr. Jung Mong Jun, founder and honorary chairman of the ASAN Institute for Policy Studies, who has made ASAN Institute as one of the prominent think tanks in East Asia. Dr. Lee hong -gu, former Prime Minister of the Republic of Korea, who is truly a respected statesman uh, in our society. Uh, former Foreign Minister Han sung ju and former Foreign Minister Yoon young wan and honorable members of the Korean National Assembly, uh, Tae young ho uh, and also former member Kim Jong-un, uh, and Acting U.S. Ambassador Christopher Del Corso, who is jointly uh, preparing and hosting uh, this important uh, seminar. Dr. Edwin Fuller, founder and former president of the Heritage Foundation and a great supporter of uh, Rock U.S. Alliance, uh, and also Ambassador Lee Jun Gyu, chairman of the ASAN Institute for Policy Studies and um, former ambassador to Japan and also to India. Uh, Honorable uh, Hwang Jin Ha, uh, the former member of the Korean National Assembly, and Chairman um, Che Jung Kyung, Korea America Association, and James Kim, a good friend from uh, MCHAM, and Dr. Lin, uh, John Linton, <laughs> nice to see you again, and uh, Dr. Paul Wolfowitz, uh, and also um, Honorable uh, member of the former uh, member of the National Assembly, floor leader Na Gyeong-won, who has recently been to Davos Forum, and many other guests, Shim, Honorable Shim Yun jo and Dr. Lee Jung-min, and Sumi Terry from Washington, uh, and also Bruce Klingner, and I see Scott Snyder, and Eric Life Beasley, and also Karin House. I hope he's very safe and sound today. Distinguished guests and friends and fellow supporters of Barack U.S. Alliance, it is indeed a great pleasure to be here today in celebration of the Korea-U.S. relations. I would like to extend my appreciation to the ASAN Institute and the U.S. Embassy in Seoul for inviting me to this meaningful occasion. This year marks 140th anniversary of Korea-U.S. relations uh, and the close ties between our two countries. Our two countries have spent almost half of this time as allies, because we are celebrating the 70th anniversary of Korea-U.S. alliance next year. An alliance that manages to last for more than a half century testifies to its effectiveness to adapt itself to the changes in the geopolitical environment and meet the dem demands of the times. During recent summit between President Yoon suk yeol and President Joe Biden, the relevance of our alliance for the 21st century was well illustrated again. This summit came just 11 days after President Yoon's inauguration, marking the earliest meeting in a Korean president's term in office with the President of the United States. Despite the limited time available for preparation, our leaders, once they met, were able to connect with each other and develop a personal chemistry very quickly. During the three-day visit, the two leaders met every day and spent a total of almost seven hours together. But what was more impressive than the amount of time spent together was the richness of discussions ranging from their national agenda and the vision of the alliance to their pets and how they both married up. As foreign minister, I had the privilege to accompany the two leaders closely. And one of the words that President Biden mentioned several times during his visit to the Samsung Electronics Pyeongtaek campus 
the largest single semiconductor manufacturing company in the world. And also the summit meeting was unbelievable. And at the end of the three-day visit, when the two leaders bid farewell, President Biden said to President Yoon, I trust you. So the presidential visit started with unbelievable and ended up with I, I trust you. I think these two words best describe President Biden's visit to Korea as well as the current state of our bilateral alliance. At the summit, the two leaders proclaimed their vision to expand our alliance into a global, comprehensive, strategic partnership, which is global in scope, comprehensive in content, and moves beyond traditional security to encompass economic security and technological cooperation. Based on a common appreciation and belief in universal values, such as freedom, democracy, rule of law, and human rights, on top of their mutual trust, our leaders were able to see eye to eye in so many fronts during the summit. In fact, the two leaders agreed that the coalition of like-minded democratic nations is important to protect and promote democratic values and norms in the world. I think the summit was significant in three aspects. First, our two leaders reaffirmed their mutual commitment to the defense of the Republic of Korea in face of the heightened nuclear and ballistic missile threat from the North. For the first time, the U.S. affirmed at the highest level its extended deterrence using the full range of U.S. defense capabilities, including nuclear, conventional, and missile defense capabilities. In addition, both leaders reiterated our common goal of the complete denuclearization of North Korea and agreed to strengthen our airtight coordination to this end. Moreover, the two leaders also emphasized the importance of the ROC U.S.-Japan trilateral cooperation with regard to North Korea. At the same time, they made it clear that the door remains open for dialogue with North Korea and called on Pyongyang to return to the negotiations. The result of the summit was well demonstrated in our immediate, determined, and coordinated response to North Korea's launch of three ballistic missiles, including an ICBM on May 25th. In addition to the very close coordination, coordination among our relevant authorities, our two countries had a series of high-level communication in the first few hours of the launch, including my telephone conversation with Secretary of State Tony Blinken and also with the Japanese Foreign Minister Hayashi Yoshimasa. Second, our two countries recognize the need to enhance policy communication and coordination on so-called economic security issues, including securing resilient supply chain, chains and protecting critical technology. To this end, the two leaders agreed to launch an economic security dialogue between our national security councils and also agreed to further enhance cooperation in areas such as nuclear energy, aerospace, the cyber domain, biotechnology, and defense industry. Third, this summit provided an opportunity to elevate the standing of our alliance to bolstering the regional and international order. President Yoon laid out Korea's goal to serve as a global pivotal state, and we call it GPS, with a focus on promoting freedom, peace, and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific region and beyond. And President Biden valued and welcomed this initiative that embraces greater regional and global responsibilities by Republic of Korea. Korea has also pledged to play an active role in establishing new norms in the region by joining the IPAF, Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, which just started, and promoting cooperation with the Quad, Quadrilateral Dialogue. 
In addition, our two countries will continue to oppose all activities that undermine the rules-based international order, including Russia's unprovoked aggression against Ukraine. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Memorial Day was observed in the United States earlier this week. While we will be observing our own Memorial Day in Korea next Monday, the Rock us Alliance was forged in blood on the battlefield. And after more than seven decades, the alliance is stronger than ever. We have truly nurtured a model alliance in history. Despite this remarkable achievement, there can be no pause in our efforts to ensure the alliance evolves further to meet the challenges of today and prepare ourselves for the perils of tomorrow. I feel honored to serve as foreign minister at, of the Republic of Korea at this critical moment and in this transformative chapter in the history of our bilateral relationship. If I may apply what President Biden has said about the United States to our alliance, it is never a good bet to bet against the ROC-US alliance. Friends and colleagues here today are key players in nurturing our alliance. My deep thanks goes to each and every one of you. The day after Memorial Day in Washington, D.C., President Biden met with Korean supergroup BTS at the White House. As you all know, I heard that the White House press briefing room um, live streamed that day attracted more than 300,000 viewers, which is several hundred times more than its average audience. During his meeting with the BTS, President Biden said to the boy band, people care a lot about what you say. It's not just your good talent. It's the message that you are communicating. It matters. This is a good example of how powerful cultural messages and people-to-people -people exchange can be in furthering strengthening ties between our two countries. I grew up with the music of the Beatles in the 60s and 70s, aspiring their music and the message. Now, young people in the world grow up with the BTS, which enjoys a global attraction with their music and the message for peace, love, freedom, and humanity. And I think that the Rock us Alliance should contribute to these values. And I count on you all for your abiding interest in and support for the Korea-US Alliance, the ties between our two countries, and the strong bond between our two peoples. Thank you very much, and congratulations once again. Thank you.